Hey guys, this is a uh, kind of a closing remark to the uh, supposed camping trip. All right, I'm going to recap because I didn't get in a lot of footage in this weekend. Um, so to put in context, uh, Sebastiano and I have been talking about uh, going camping for almost a year now since he found out that I was doing this the YouTube channel. Uh, we've been friends for a while and he's always had a... Uh, had a um, uh, or anyways, he, he had expressed an, an interest in bushcraft, and he wanted to, for me to, to show him, you know, what it was like to go you know, go out camping and, and shelter and all that stuff. Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Uh, this weekend, I will be going camping, and uh, be taking the canoe for its first uh, maiden voyage. Finally, so uh, really excited about that. And I'm also uh, taking a friend of mine out for uh, to, for a bushcraft camping weekend or like a one uh, an overnighter, uh, and it's actually the first time that he's ever camped in the wilderness. He's done, um, and he asked me uh, if we can uh, build a sh build a shelter. You know, let, let the cam uh, let the tents uh, stay home, and I said uh, that sounds well. It's pretty much the only way I want to sleep out in the woods anyway. Needless to say, between the uh, trying out of the canoe and uh, this trip that we've been putting out for a while, there was a lot of uh, uh, a lot of excitement and uh, and build up to this to this trip. It was my first real camping trip of the year. So this is the morning of our first camping trip. We can, you can take the shot of the the canoe. We got the uh, the canoe loaded up, ready to go. So we're heading out. Uh, I actually just took. Um, uh, Google Maps and uh, just randomly picked a lake that had uh, a couple of islands in the middle of the lake and that's where we're gonna go. Uh, there was a access road close to the lake so I don't even know what to expect when we get there. We're gonna see it's kind of like the adventure, kind of the excitement of, uh, of heading out that way and uh, and we'll have to find a place where the truck can park for the night and then hike out and try to find access to the water and then uh, We'll uh, go scope out the territory of seeing where there's a good campsite. So this uh, this starts. And I can't wait to get this uh, uh, out in the water. We'll see how it floats, how or how it sinks, and uh, it'll be the culmination of a lot of hours of work. And uh, it should be a good day. The weather's look it up. The weather is amazing. We should have uh, 20, 20 uh, at least 20 Celsius uh, to a minimum tonight. Should have a beautiful. St uh, uh, not too overcast. It's announcing a bit of rain, I think, uh, early morning, but either way. All right. I choose a site, and I uh, I choose the that, that lake that uh, we drive uh, uh, an hour and a half uh, north of Montreal. If I get to this little dirt road, and this, the owner was there. Uh, it happened to be outside, and he, he, he sees the, the canoe on top of my truck, and he's just like, no. You guys aren't coming in here. Uh, so he says, this is my land. Uh, this, I own the lake. I own everything around it. Uh, it's uh, bow hunting season here. I got people on the, on my uh, my property. So you guys can't come in here. So he's kind of a dick about it too. But <laughs> okay, so can't go there. So we go, go out to another another lake, uh, this uh, this bigger lake uh, north, uh, about, an, uh, about a half hour, an hour north of there. So uh, we get there, we unload the unload the canoe. Everything's fine. We hop in, and then you'll see the you'll see the footage of me getting in the in the boat. And I just watched the footage myself. The whole boat, the whole top of the boat, like leaning up, was kind of funny. But uh, and I noticed right away. Okay, this this canoe is is a lot less stable than I'm used to. I'm used to kind of the big flat bottom uh, kind of family canoes, and uh, so I was surprised right away. I thought, oh, is there something wrong with my boat? Like, did I? They, they, you know, this is well. I, I didn't. I didn't know. So um, it turns out that uh, first of all, the canoe that I that I have restored is a round bottom canoe. So they're known to be uh, for more advanced canoers, and they're initially less stable. Um, so like they, they feel less stable, but supposedly it's actually they're actually harder to tip. Uh, you can go up a uh, uh, more of an angle, but they won't actually tip, or at least they're harder to tip. Uh, it's a little out of my comfort zone for, for personally like I said I'm, I am by no way uh, a, a, a expert canoeer 
So uh, that was the first surprise. The second one was the fact that this lake was humongous. So there's like w rolling waves, at least about uh, some of them are up to foot foot high. It was windy, overcast. So we have Sebastiano, who's barely been in a canoe ever in his life. Uh, I me mean, that's uh, that that has spent a lot of time in in, in lake canoes and in, in, in rapids, but I've never felt uh, unstable. So. It was hilarious. We were laughing our head off, but I was like so scared to lose my equipment because these these waves were kept on hitting the side of the boat. So I, the, most of the time, even though I wanted to go there, the waves are coming this way. So I'm heading straight into the waves. Screw that. The the whole time, <laughs> every time that uh, a wave would hit the side, it would just basically like uh, it's, uh, it almost tip us over. I was saying I'm going to lose my bag. I'm going to lose my stuff. So it's. It wasn't a good scenario in, by any means being out in that open water uh, with it's if it was just over our skill level but it basically I'm sure that uh, many of you that are expert canoers would would just would be probably fine or at least find a, a nice challenge but for us it was terrifying <laughs> I just kept on thinking I'm gonna roll over we have to swim to the shore I'm gonna lose all my stuff so we headed out in the middle of the island that's where the second shot came in just between the two islands uh, where I was able to get a little bit of footage and I was thinking, okay, I'm just going to get to the campsite and, and it will hey be alright. We'll be alright. Can you see yourself? Uh, yeah, I see uh, that I'm in the shot. The shot's like really crooked, so you're going to make everyone like seasick, but uh, tilt, tilt upwards of it. There you go. Hey guys, finally out in the water. It's clouded over and honestly, we're on a huge lake and it's been pretty rough. Like right here, I'm right between two islands, so at the uh, I'm hidden from the from the uh, from the wind, so this is a lot less waves. Um, putting our open water canoeing ta <laughs> techniques to the test. The challenge now is that this lake, uh, we this is actually the second lake that we went to, and uh, unless there's a resource somewhere, uh, I can't tell. I, I couldn't tell which lake was privately owned or probably all privately owned around here. Uh, so we're it's it's a challenge trying to find a campsite. Because uh, like every stretch of shore is uh, has been owned by someone, and we're like two hours north of Montreal, uh, so I'm guessing if I really wanted to get uh, uh, more wilderness, it I'd have to go a lot farther. Um, so that might be what I'll do next time. But anyways, for tonight, we'll just keep paddling. So uh, afterwards, we had another couple of close calls with some odd, they like, got kind of freak waves. So I said, screw this. I'm not, I am not, uh, like, I'm not doing this tomorrow or whatever. So we head, we head back, head back in the truck and drive back to uh, my place to go camping on the island. So that's where the second two uh, bits of shots were. So, and to, to, to come back for a second, the, all this week I've been looking at the weather. And I saw, okay, 25 degrees Celsius, which is for the Americans, like beautiful weather, uh, t-shirt weather, okay? Uh, and it was gonna be a minimum of 22 degrees with sun, maybe, uh, I think it was like 20% chance of rain, but like 0.5 millimeters of rain, like tiny, tiny little bit of rain, nothing. So I was like, oh, this is gonna be a beautiful weekend, perfect. So we hiked to the to to find a campsite on the island uh, on on the mountain. Just you know, it's a beautiful place. There's lots of little spots. So we hike out about you know 40 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, whatever. And then I find a spot. The second we put our our bags down, downpour. Okay, so our plans went awry. Couldn't find any place to camp on the lake. It's completely surrounded by uh, chalets, which were not visible on the satellite imagery. So we ended up coming back. Uh, on the mountain next to my house and still doing some bit, a bit of bushcrafting. The second we get here, downpour, so which is always fun. So it complicates the entire setting up of a camp. We still got a fire going. It's just that the whole time we spent about three hours, you know, battling the humidity and uh, gathering, trying to find some dry wood and so drying off some wood at the same time. So, but it's still. Still in high spirits and having fun. We got ourselves a little temporary shelter with a simple tarp. Like I said, I would have liked to have had a little bit more time. Had it been uh, dry and not raining, I would have uh, probably built up a little bit more of a hefty shelter, which would have been fun, but at least we got a roof over our head. And uh, we should be set for the night with, uh, with this firewood that we've gathered, so. 
And uh, again, because of the rain, I would have liked to get a lot more footage. But tomorrow's another day. We might be might uh, if it's uh, nice tomorrow morning, then uh, I'll have the chance to get a bit more footage out. Bye for now. Like seriously, downpour. Yeah, I was as I was walking to the campsite. I was like, there's there's lots of dead trees all over the place. I'll say like, perfect place for shelter building. We'll have lots of kindling for for starting a fire. This will be a nice nice ex a, a first experience for for Sebastiano to to have a, as his first camping experience. So again, I put down the bags. Pff, downpour. So already all this nice kindling soaked. So I spent the next two hours, uh, like the fire we got it going within an hour, but then it kept on like going, just like the downpour would come down and then it would just go, the, the fire would shrink down to embers and we would just scramble to put more wood on or find more, find more uh, uh, like dry kindling off of the branches of the like, dead branches and stuff. It was a frantic um, race against just to get a fire going. Not that it was very cold, but it, we just needed a fire to get supper going and whatever. So we were we were both soaked at that point. The stuff was soaked. The bags were soaked. We had the tarp up, which was just a basic basic shelter with the uh, with the sides open. So we, again, though, spirits were high. We were both laughing, and I kept on telling him, "This is not usually what it's like. You know, the weather happens, whatever." But so. Uh, we get the fire really going and it doesn't matter how much it's raining now the good uh, once the fire is really caught uh, we had some trees ar around the fire and it was uh, and it was drying uh, the the branches as it as it went so we had the fire was taken care of at that point so we get settled in I boil some water I have some uh, some nice uh, uh, free freeze dried uh, kind of backpacking food so not, nothing complicated so um, we were munching and just laughing and, and, and you know, looking at the rain and, and and still enjoying ourselves under this tarp. So the rain kind of breaks down a bit, it's just drizzle. And now the sun's kind of setting at this point, so it's around like 8 o'clock. You start noticing uh, the bugs at this point. For some how, again, the luck and all on our side, we somehow picked a, a campsite near a spider's nest because there were like hundreds hundreds of spiders all over the ground that we were camping and I'm thinking okay um in my head I'm thinking uh, I don't want to say too much uh but I'm thinking I I'm I'm sleeping on this ground and there's spiders crawling all over the place I don't like I can deal with pretty much anything I love uh, most most insects spiders not so much but so these spiders are crawling on my sleeping bag underneath the mat I see them on the ground and we're not talking like itty bitty spiders, like some of these were the size of quarters. Uh, and and I've never seen this before. Like I've been in this in this forest like hundreds of times. And you know, the general bugs, but I've never seen this amount of spiders in one spot. So of course this is where we, we picked the camp, right? So I'm still not saying much. All of a sudden, uh, I'm looking around and, the, and then there's, there's uh, because of the rain, I guess, uh, one salamander, two salamanders, three salamanders. They're, again, they're crawling all over our stuff. And salamanders are cute, so those don't really bother me at all. But he's not, he's looking around and seeing these all these insects and like, and we're both thinking, this is where we're sleeping, right? Like, you know, no protection, just a sleep bag and a sleep mat. <laughs> so again, the reality is kind of setting in like, uh, it might not have been the best campsite. And especially with the, with these with humid humid weather. Anyways, the, for some reason the spiders are getting bigger. Like I spotted a couple of them that are like this big. And then, of course, since it had to get better, uh, the, a storm hits. We're on top of the mountain, so this huge amount of wind starts blowing around, and I'm thinking a lot of the trees around us are dead. So we're either going to get impaled. By something there was nothing above i checked it above like the the, the trees in our facility was were, were fine but we were hearing branches come down in like the like close in distance like you know like tw within 20 30 feet uh branches and 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 treetops coming down the the rain just kept on getting heavier and heavier so at this point the the rain's coming in sideways from this from the side of the tarps so our bags which were dry at this point because of the nice big fire in front of us were getting soaked again this uh, we hadn't brought out the sleeping bags until that moment so the sleeping bags are getting soaked <laughs> so, <laughs> this is going great so at that point about like I'm thinking I'm pretty much about to call this 
like just let's just walk back and call it quits because uh, we're not gonna have a good night no matter what we were not gonna have a good night in this soaking wet rain um, even though it wasn't that cold uh, it still would have been a miserable night we both had to work on Monday so at some point it, again <laughs> at this point it's like nine o'clock pitch black hmm? 40 minutes into the woods off trail well there's nothing, there's nothing so I call it <laughs> look oh, again, it's my finger it's this is not ideal at all and he was all, he was all for it so we pack up in in the soaking rain we pack up and uh it takes us about five minutes so then i st i I'm, at, I'm in front of the fire and i said okay i know we came in from the we came in uh, to get out of here we'll have to go to south uh, southeast so i start walking knowing that that, that way southeast i walked about 15 20 steps and i think i'm, I'm gonna, i should take up my compass like, cause uh, it's it's the first time I've never hiked in the dark before, especially in a pit by, a pitch black dark. Um, I had uh, my headlamp on, but then uh, so anyways, I take out my compass and I look and I say, this is not the right direction. So I look back. I can't see camp already, cause like it's just such a thick forest. So I look around and I, I try to reorient, uh, reorient, reorient myself. So. I head back what I thought was the opposite direction, back towards camp. Walk five minutes. I was like, this is already farther than, this is way farther than what I set out. Sebastiano, who had a, in a uh, still had his orientation somehow, he still says, he says, I think it's the, the camp's back this way. And I said, well, since I don't have no idea, <laughs> I'm supposed to be the guide. I have no idea. Uh, let's try your idea. So sure enough, we hit right like two minutes walking. We headed into the camp. We hit, we walked right into the back of the camp. I rocked somehow within five minutes. I walked all the way around and hit it back into like I got came in from the back of the, uh, from the opposite direction of what I where I left. And then I realized like wow, this is a great, this is an amazing experience because like I had read and heard lots that it's extremely dangerous to walk in the woods at night. Because uh, you dis you get disoriented extremely fast, like well, no shit, <laughs> like like 15 yards and I was gone. Like because there was there was no way. Like you you can't see anything in front of it for five minutes. There's you can't see anywhere more than five five six feet in front of you, even with a good uh, halogen light, and and the rain of course. So there's no visual cues. I never get lost. I always remember. Uh, like visual cues from if I, I can always get out from where I came in because I remember things so but you can't do that in the dark so once I was back at the camp and I took off with the compass and I know I was like I know the path is southeast so from there I had my compass out the whole time and every three five steps I would look down and it's crazy you come up to a tree and you think oh well, I'm just gonna go around the tree so I go a bit left walk around the tree and then when you were on the other side of the tree, you head a bit right to go back what you thought was the same direction that you were heading, and you're five, six degrees, five, six, ten degrees off, so you're heading slightly different. You do that 25 times, you're going around in circles, quickly, if you don't have your compass out, obviously. So, crazy, uh, a great experience for, uh, for, like, next time I'll know that no matter what, you do not take one step without your compass out when you're walking at night, because you can't depend on anything else. So uh, f from the second try to get out was fine. We just walked straight out, followed the compass, found the trail, it was set out. So I get home, hot shower, pack it up, tell my wife the whole story. She's laughing at me. So, uh, <laughs> and then to top it all off, the next, I wake up around three o'clock in the morning in the house, in my basement, frozen. Because we left one of the windows open uh, airing out constantly. It's, we commonly do that in, in the summer. It's a little warm. So I go out and I close the door. I close the close the window and I check my phone for the temperature. It was down to 10 degrees Celsius. So much for the weather network, eh? We would have been out there. If we would have stayed, we would have been out there freezing our ass off. I had a t-shirt and uh, a long sleeve uh, kind of a carpa, uh, carpa yeah. Uh, and and my winter's uh, my winter um, uh, sleeping bag, at soaked at ten degrees, we would have like it would have. I don't think it would have been uh, dangerous or hypothermia, but 
like we would have been extremely uncomfortable. We would have had a horrible night. So all in all, complete. We had fun, but it was it was uh, it was an interesting day. <laughs> so not the ideal bushcraft camping, but um, yeah. Anyway, that's my story. Uh, I'll try to keep the other, uh, <laughs> well, anyways, yeah, that, that's, that, that's the, that's my interesting camping trip for, for the, for, for, for this summer. Uh, hopefully I'll get another chance to, 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 uh, to camp out and, uh, with some more, um, agreeable weather. So on that note, <laughs> see you guys.